Installment of searchable course reviews here on vacation once again and today we are playing one of my all-time favorite courses in my home state home city of Birmingham Alabama we have traveled all the way up to George Ward Park this is actually one of the oldest courses in the state it's where I actually learned how to play the game. So I'm really excited to showcase this case or this course for everybody. Uh, hopefully we'll get some good shots, some nice ace runs, and just give you a breakdown of some of the lines to hit if you do choose to come to Birmingham to get in a round of golf. So hole one plays as a 279 foot par three in the C position today. You can see the road up to the left, which plays as OB. It's slightly uphill, so it doesn't really come into play unless you just really spray one up that direction. There's a creek just short of the pin that typically plays as casual and a very late mando to the right. Hole two, we are in the B position, which plays as a 365 foot par three. It also plays slightly uphill, so a little bit closer to that 375, 380 foot mark. There is OB along the left, that same road that comes into play on hole one, as well as just long and down to the right as a second service road comes into play. There are two late trees that prevent the high stall shot, and so you really have to skip something either off the rocks or the low grass if the grass has been cut. Hole three, we are in the A position, which plays as a gradual downhill hole at 326 feet, par three. There are a couple of late guardian trees that have been cleaned up significantly since I first started playing. These used to grab anything that wasn't an absolutely perfect throw. The play for me is a slight turnover backhand with a putter. You have to be careful not to go too long as there is a road that does come into play.
this course has a lot of history. It's been around for a long time. And like I said, I started playing about 19 years ago on this very course. Right now I'm walking on one of the additions that was added maybe 12, 13 years ago, which is a walking path for other patrons of the park. Initially, we thought it was going to disrupt the disc golf course, but we were able to get in contact with them early on to make sure it didn't really mess up the flow or directly impact anything. And now it's actually used by open level players uh, or even in some tournaments as artificial OB rivers, which is kind of a nice little addition to make what would otherwise be a relatively straightforward open course a bit more difficult. Hole four, we are in the B position, which is playing at 275 feet as a par three. The only real danger on this hole is going too long as there are some bushes, which will gobble up any disc and prevent for any sort of putt. There is also the walking path, which if you choose to play OB, sits about 10 to 15 feet to the left of the pin. Otherwise, it's a pretty straightforward right hand backhand shot with the putter. Hole five plays as a 407 foot par three in the B position. This is the longest and most open hole on the course. It's the only hole where you really get to air it out and throw whatever you want. This, when I was starting to play, was the one hole where you would bring all of your new discs to really see how they would fly. The walking path does come into play on both sides if you choose to play that is out of bounds and can either be used as a island fairway or simply as OB rivers. For hole six, we are in the C position, which measures at 263 feet. The walking path lines the entire right side of this fairway, so I prefer the backhand turnover so as not to skip too far to the right. The only other danger is going long into the bushes. What I love about this hole is there are three different pins, which call for three very distinct shot shapes, adding a lot of variety to the course. walk from six to seven I wanted to point out something you probably picked up on with a couple of flyovers especially hole six and you'll see it here in just a second this course has a lot of different baskets on it there's a lot of history behind that in terms of courses that have been in the ground and been pulled and what have you but the nice thing is because there are so many baskets available many of the holes actually have multiple permanent pins in play. Now, if you pull up U-Disc, George Ward has multiple different configurations set up for play. And typically the gold pins, as far as I can tell, are the setup for that particular month, however frequently they're doing it. A little bit of history behind that, when I used to live here, I always got annoyed with the fact that the course was either set up in the all shorts or the most mostly shorts and there were a lot of pin positions that never got used so one of the things i did was i sat down crunched the numbers on the total lengths of holes and then came up with a rotation system in that rotation system i tried to make it as fair as possible so not so when you look at a for instance 
That does not mean that everything is in the shorts. C does not mean that everything is in the long. It is simply a configuration of the 18 main holes on the course set up so that you get some variety. And I know that they do still use that system today. I have no clue how often they actually change it. But I think it's one of the added perks whenever you have multiple pin positions and you have limited pins that you should incorporate in your courses. Because the pro players don't want to play the shorts all the time and the am players don't want to play the longs all the time. If you give a good mix, everyone in the end will be happy. So it's one of the things I did out here that I'm actually very proud of. Hole seven is one of the few holes on this course which actually has four pin positions that can be utilized. Today we are in the C position which plays as a 345 foot par three, which is more or less a pretty straight shot. Most of the other positions are more towards the left, which bring the walking path into play. You'll also notice some telephone wires directly in front. And yes, if you were wondering, your disc can absolutely get stuck in there. I've done it on more than one occasion. Hole eight plays as a 341 foot par three to the C position. This is one of my favorite types of shots. The forehand or turnover backhand both work well here for the right-handed player. I of course prefer the backhand to get that soft landing to the green. It's blind to the pin and plays downhill. So you can disc down a little if you have the control. The only real danger is going too long and getting into some of the rough or going too straight over the fence OB. We're wrapping up the front nine with this 263 foot par three. We're in the C position today. The camera does not do it justice as this hole plays significantly uphill, adding at least 30 to 40 feet of power to reach the pin. There's an OB fence to the left, otherwise not too much danger. The longer pin positions do have a late mender that comes into play as an attempt to keep you from throwing over hole one's tee. Hole 10 is a relatively short 264 foot par three in the C position. There used to be a much tighter gap, but two of the big guardian trees have fallen now making this hole much easier to access. There's a ditch about 180 feet from the T that if you fall into can make for awkward footing, but other than going too long, there's not a lot of danger on this hole. Another tap in. Hole 11 plays as a 380 foot par three in the B position today. This hole has a tricky green to access with the long pins. There's two options immediately off the tee. The left gap is a straight line to the pin, but difficult to execute with a very low lying limb obstructing it today. The right-sided gap, which we're flying over, is more open, but requires a precise landing short of the gap to access the green, or a bit of luck as you crash the bushes to the right of the entryway, assuming you don't miss the very late Mando. time here on the tee of hole 12. This hole will always hold a special bit of uh, sentimental value to me. This is the first hole I ever got a hole in one on. 
a true hole-in-one first shot, no emptying the bag. Um, it was not a tournament ace. I know some people consider those the only true aces, but this was still a one shot off the tee straight in. I had two witnesses uh, actually when I did it. <clears throat> so it's a nice, easy downhill, uh, 247 foot hole. Uh, and actually today as I step up, that's exactly where the gold pin is. So let's see if we can't ring it up again. So as I mentioned, this is a 247 foot par three in the B position. We're playing downhill. There's lots of little small gaps to hit off the tee as well as some rough to the left. Otherwise, not really a whole lot of danger on this one. You just want to hope you don't skip too long past the pin. Hole 13 plays as a 293 foot par 3 in the B position, throwing across a small creek which runs the entire length of the middle of the fairway. I really like this hole because the three different pins require three very different shots. From a short putter touch shot to the A pin to a full fairway or distance driver to the 425 foot C position. That walking path again comes into play and travels around the back side of the B pin, which can be used as OB if you so choose. So one of the takeaways of George Ward, if you've never played out here, is that this is kind of the standard quintessential park style course of the 90s. Unfortunately, just due to time, weather, a lot of things have changed even in the last 10 years since I've been here, uh, or since last 10 years since I've lived here, uh, a lot of trees have come down making the course considerably easier than it was when I first started playing. Of course, also, I've been playing much longer, so my skill set has improved. But you can definitely see a lot of the gaps that used to be a lot tighter and more demanding are much more open and forgiving. The rough is not nearly as rough as it used to be, just due to people going in and uh, trampling down some of those areas. But overall, like I said, this is one of my favorite courses. I think if you are trying to learn the game of disc golf this is the perfect type of course to do that on it's got a little bit of distance on one or two of the holes but for the most part it's fair and it'll keep you honest hole 14 plays uphill to the 267 foot par 3c pin today another late mando on the right is aimed at keeping players away from hole 15's tee pad the only other real danger is more for the shorter A pin as the road lines that side of the fairway. You also want to make sure you don't get too high as you can get caught up in some of those trees that we're flying past now. But the green is pretty open. So very important 
if you come out here to play. This course actually has 24 holes on it. The 18 original, which is what we're gonna be playing today. And then there's actually six additional holes known as the wooded section that starts right after hole 14. I don't typically play those holes, just not my favorites. And often when I'm out here, I'm in a time crunch. In fact, today here on vacation, we have some other plans. So we're gonna skip those six today. Maybe someday I'll come back and give you a video of those as well. But they are fun, they're just very different. You also see, uh, I took a little bit of shot there just to show you that unfortunately that part of the park doesn't get quite as much tear and upkeep keep as the original. And so those lines are much, much tighter. The rough is much, much rougher and it's easier to lose a disc in there. For much of this review, I think I'm gonna do a voiceover, but for 15, I'm gonna do this one live while we're here. So many would consider this the signature hole on the course. You tee from an elevated pin position, maybe 20, 25 feet, maybe 30 feet downhill. And the original position, you can actually see there's someone on the hole over there, plays across a little creek. There's a giant pine once you get at the base of the hill that used to be about a fifth of the size it is now, which kind of blocks the big hyzer route. And so now the play is really to go straight between this gap here, which is what I used to play anyway. There are two other positions. You can't quite see it from the camera here. I'll try to zoom in to show you at least the straight position, which is basically sitting right at the creek there. And then there's a third position that's tucked over to the right. Since we're playing goals today, we're gonna play this route. I may throw one over the big hyzer route just to see if we can get over there. Again, just going to give you a view of the creek from the short side. You can see it's pretty shallow, not very wide. So as long as you're carrying the short side, you should be okay. You can see the forehand landed there. This was the big hyzer. And then the straight shot, almost got an for you guys on camera, is actually tucked right there behind the basket. Hole 16 plays as a 329 foot par 3 in the B position, which is actually blind from the T. As we fly past, you'll notice a nice row of trees on either side. When I started playing, these trees were tiny and you could just throw a big hyzer over everything. Now you're more, mostly forced to hit the gap to execute the birdie. There is an OB softball field behind the pin that shouldn't really come into play, but if you do go a little too long, you'll find some awkward footing and maybe even some bushes making for an obstructed putt.
Hole 17 plays as a 250 foot par 3 in the C position, tucked between a late 15 to 20 foot gap at the top of the hill. There's a slope to the left often marked as OB during tournaments, which even without OB easily adds a stroke or more to your scorecard if you find it. The key here for the right hand backhand player like myself is just trusting the disc to hold the line you put it on without fading out too early. The final hole on this course plays at 308 feet in the C position, par 3. Thanks to time and mother nature, this hole's gotten significantly easier as a lot of the guardian trees have come down. The addition of an early mando prevents the wide hyzer, but the best play is still finding the hyzer gap just beyond it to get out into the open. That's going to do it for this episode of Surgical Course Reviews. Again, this was George Ward Park in Birmingham, Alabama. The first course in Birmingham, one of the first courses in Alabama. One of my all-time favorites where I learned the game. There are quite a few more courses now in this area, including Inverness Disc Golf Course, colloquially known as Indigo, which is probably one of the best, most technical wooded courses I've ever played, <clears throat> and a handful of others. So I highly recommend if you're in the area, you definitely got to check out George Ward just because of the history, the longevity. It's a great course. It's a nice park style course. It is not the most difficult. There is a little bit of everything. There are a couple technical shots, some short putter throws, some longer shots, one or two where you do have to actually throw fairway or driver on. Some elevation, both up and downhill, left to right, right to left. It's a great variety of shots, and especially unless you're training for that elite pro tour level, this is a great course to actually learn the game on. I'm very thankful that this was my first introduction to the sport. So if you liked that video, please make sure that you click the like button, subscribe to the channel, We've got more content coming out, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.